What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a quick introduction of Swift Data. Swift Data is Apple's new persistence framework announced at WWDC 2023. Before we jump into the video, make sure you destroy that like button down below. Subscribe if you're new here and let's build out a quick project with some Swift data. So we're going to open up the latest version of Xcode here, 15.0.1. And I'm going to create an app here and let's call this a grocery list. We're basically going to build a app where a user can add items to a grocery list and also delete them. And of course, they're going to be persisted with Swift data. So we want to make sure we stick with Swift UI here. You can, in theory, use it with UI kit and storyboard, but we're going to build our UI and Swift UI. And in the storage piece, you could actually pick Swift data and it'll do some setup for you, but we're gonna do it from scratch so we can actually learn how to do it on our own in existing projects. Save your project wherever you'd like. And first things first, let's expand our Xcode window and just kind of outline how we're gonna approach this. So Swift data lets you persist models and relationships of other models in a persistent container. So let's just write out some of the concepts we're gonna go over. So we have a model. Let's try to spell things correctly. We've got a container and then there's going to be something called a context as well. So your model is basically the data that you are going to persist. Your container is where things get saved and your context is how you interact with the data. So in other words, if you want to save stuff or delete stuff or query stuff, that's how you go about doing it. So let's jump right in by creating a model. So I'm going to hit command N and we're going to create a new Swift file. We're going to call this a grocery list item to represent a single item. First things first, we'll import Swift data, not UI, Swift data. And we'll just create a basic class here. I'll call it a grocery list uh, item and Xcode 15 gives me some nice autocompletes. We're gonna have a title on here, maybe not name. We'll have a title. We'll have perhaps a subtitle here. And we will also have a date for perhaps when this grocery list item was added. Now we of course need an initializer. And if you just start typing in it, the IDE will autocomplete this for you in a class. And to convert this to a model, we're just gonna use the new Swift macro called, surprise, surprise, model. Now, if you're not familiar with Swift macros, they're also something new. You can actually right click it and you can actually expand uh, the macro to see what's going on in here. It basically just hides and obfuscates implementation from the macro author, in this case, Apple. So this is all that you need to do to define a model that you can persist, some piece of data. For those of you coming from the world of core data, this is a lot easier and nicer than creating a janky other Xcode file and trying to configure all these other fields. So now that we've got a model, let's go back to our content view and look at what we got to cover. So we've got our model. Now we want a container. Now a container needs to be injected at the app level into your window. So if we go to this grocery list app, you'll see here on our window group, we can actually inject a container uh, in one of two ways. There's actually a modifier for this and I believe it's called model container and I should probably import Swift data before we try to use it because it won't show up. So if we do model container, you'll see there's um, three options here and the ones that are relevant or the ones that I find most helpful to know are this first one, which takes a model container. You can instantiate a model container up above here and pass that in, or the one that I find is usually sufficient for most folks and is pretty simple to work with is this second one, where you can actually pass just your models directly to this version of the modifier. So I can say in this case, grocery list item dot self. And you might be wondering, well, what if I have multiple? Not to worry, you can just pass it as an array, just like that. We only have one, so I'll undo that. And boom, we've got a container, good to go. Next up, we're gonna jump back to our content view. We got the container out of the way, and let's talk about this context thing. So a context is basically what you're gonna use, like I mentioned, to uh, work with your data. So saving stuff, deleting stuff, and updating stuff, all that good stuff. So the way we access the context, just like several other things in the world of Swift UI, is through an environment variable. So we are going to say environment here, and the environment variable that we want is our model context. Autocomplete helped us out there. Now we're just gonna call it our context. 
Now, Context has methods and APIs off of it, such as save, delete, uh, you can update things as well. And because of the world of Swift data and Swift UI, traditionally you would have to like insert something into the Context and say, hey, Context, go ahead and make sure you save. But it just does it for you. And let's actually see that in action by building out a pretty simple little app here. I'm gonna build it out. I might go through this a little quickly since we're not focusing on UI, but those of you familiar with basics of Swift UI, uh, this should all be very familiar. So I'm gonna have a navigation view in here. We're gonna to toss a V stack in here and we're gonna have a text field to basically be able to create a uh, new grocery list item. So I'll just say add item here and we'll have new item string, which will be a state up above that I'll add in just a moment. We're gonna make this look semi nice. So, you know, this doesn't look super ugly. So we'll do that here. Right below it, we're gonna have a list and this list is going to uh, enumerate all of our grocery list items and show something here, but initially we don't have that. So let's just leave that put for a quick moment. So here we'll have new item string will be an empty string just like that. And what we wanna do is also have a button here. And when we tap the button, we wanna save this new item. So I'm gonna have a button here. It'll just be called save. And let's see why this is yelling at me. It looks like Google Updater is complaining. I don't know what that is. I'm not gonna let it interrupt the video. Let's proceed. So when we hit the save button, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our new item string uh, isn't empty. And if it's uh, empty, we're just gonna you know return. We don't wanna save. And if it's not empty, we wanna just save this. And we don't wanna save the string. We actually wanna save the grocery list item. So let's create a new item, which will be a new instance of our model. So we'll say grocery list item. Title will be the new item string. Now we're not passing in a subtitle, but for now I'm just gonna say buy this ASAP because it's super urgent. And then date will just be an instance of a date, which will get initialized as the current date when this object is created. Next up, we're gonna say, hey, context, we just wanna go and uh, insert, actually not save, we wanna insert our model and the model we wanna save is this new item. And that's literally it. That's how you persist a model with Swift data. Now, we obviously wanna be able to read this data, so let's also talk about that before we run this in a simulator and see what we've got. So we've got this list thing down here and I'm gonna add a overlay modifier to it, which is going to basically say that if our uh, list of items is uh, empty, we wanna show basically a piece of text, a label that says no items. But you might be wondering, well, we don't have this items thing defined, so where is this coming from? So Swift Data also exposes really nice query uh, types where you can query, like the name implies, your models, and you don't have to do any weird logic or a lot of code to do so. You can actually just use this annotation and say, hey, I wanna query uh, items, which is going to be a list, a collection of grocery list item, just like that. And that's literally how you would create your query. And let's see why this is yelling at me. I believe it's because I forgot to import Swift data up here. Now, we can talk about queries actually for several hours because you can have really complex queries with sorting and all this other good stuff, but we're just gonna keep it simple so we can get a list of grocery list items out. So let's give this a run and let's see what we actually are working with. So let our simulator get its life together over here. Hopefully it won't take too long. And while it's doing that, maybe I'll stick a navigation title on here as well. So we have a nice top bar title and we'll just call this a grocery list. And hopefully this time it'll run faster since it's launched already. All right, there we are. So we have this text field up here. I'm gonna say we need to buy some eggs. We also see our empty state down here, which says no items. I'm gonna hit save. And well, if you look at that, our empty state went away, but we should probably use the results we get in the query to actually show these items. The other thing I'm gonna do here is we uh, want to clear out the text field after we have inserted the new uh, model. So we're just gonna reassign this to be an empty string. And the last thing I'll do is a simple for each loop over items and I'll say item in. And what we'll do here is the following. I'll say this is item.title, and maybe I'll say subtitle, 
And here I will also say date and perhaps we'll format this to be the short date. Or maybe I'll just do formatted like so and see what we end up with. And this is basically the model that we have got. So it looks like uh, it's you know kind of line breaking these. We only have one for now. So let's actually do it this way. Let's add milk and we get another one there. Um, these line breaks are not ideal in terms of visuals. So you might want to group all of this into a V stack. Uh, at this point, we're just being nitpicky, but let's actually just use the text here and keep things simple. So we've taken a look at how to create a model. We've taken a look at this container business, and we've also taken a look at uh, persisting this model. The last thing I want to do before I leave you all here is we should look at how we would go about deleting a model. So we've got a list here, pretty simple. We could add some more stuff. I can say buy some cookies because who doesn't like cookies? And maybe we need some ice cream because clearly I need some dessert right now. And let's be healthy and buy some avocados. Maybe, maybe we'll buy a banana instead. Banana. Okay, so we've got some items here. And we want to be able to swipe to delete on these, which is pretty simple in the land of Swift UI. We can say on delete, we want to do something. Now on delete will give us a index set. And we're going to for loop over this index set. And we can say for each index in and once again we're gonna deal with that context thing we're gonna say hey context delete an item and we want to pass basically a persistent model the model type that we actually want to delete well we've got an array of that up here items so we can simply say delete the model in items at index index all right let's give this a run let's try to swipe this away let's say we got our milk we're good to go boom gone you can keep swiping and it disappears. And that's basically Swift data in a nutshell. Let me just give this a build and run one more time to make sure that it is indeed deleted. We can add something back. Let's say we wanna buy some Oreos. There it is, it's added. That's a very brief introduction to Swift data, new way to persist data in the world of iOS and Apple development. You can use this with UIKit as well, even though it's kind of designed to be used with Swift UI. Keep in mind that this is only available in the latest software releases, so iOS 17 and macOS Sonoma. Either way, pretty good. You probably want to start looking into this to future-proof your applications. If you haven't hit that like button yet, make sure to hit sub before clicking away. Say hello in the comments. Connect on all the socials. Subscribe if you're into iOS and Apple development. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.